hello uh, we'll uh, have a small discussion on autocoits now uh, what basically are autocoits uh, these are the biological factors which act like a local hormones and have a brief duration and act near the site of synthesis so basically autocoits are local biological mediators which act for a small period of time now a uh, few autocoits are eicosanoids angiotensin neurotensin nitric oxide kinins histamine serotonins and endothelins so we are a group of autocoits so we will discuss about histamine histamine being one of the most popular autocoits and one of the most important example of a vasoactive amine histamine acts in our body through three receptors h1 h2 and h3 h2 receptor is especially only on the git which actually increases the gastric acid secretions because of the vasodilatations of the vessels and increase permeability and increase gastric acid which is h2 h1 receptors will increase the calcium influx and will lead to the muscle contractions of the smooth muscles increase permeability vasodilatations and sensory nerve endings pain and itching also is responsible h3 is not very important but then they are presynaptic receptors and they will uh, actually have an inhibition action of the histamine now when we classify the antihistamines now you know the roles of histamine so your antihistamines can be h1 antagonist or a h2 antagonist so when we say h1 antagonist in h1 antagonist you have got two types of generation generation 1 and generation 2 generation 1 is marked potential of producing sedation basically they have cause they are they are, can can be also called as a sedative antihistamines and they used to treat motion sickness okay so that's why it is one of the most important group of drugs which are called as h1 anti antagonist which are also called as sedative antagonist you have got very popular category of drugs named as chlorpheniramine uh diphenhydramine you have got cyclizine hydroxyzine meclizine promethazine your avil basically your most common brand avil is your first generation antihistamine then second generation antihistamine has definitely of late introduced and has got a very good amount of action potency duration and most important they are very very low sedative or low producing sedative drugs or a non sedative category of drugs in that the most important is cetirizine and loratadine desloratadine and fexofenadidine now you would have heard of allegra allegra comes in the brand of second generation antihistamine drugs now when we consider antihistamines so antihistamines have got a very specific adverse effects few adverse effects when acting on it you the most important is uh, sedation so on cns it is a depressor then you have got a muscarinic receptor actions and most important is anticholinergic that means it leads to xerostomia it leads to urinary retention constipation it also leads to hypotension and also leads to appetite increase and other tvs issues now the very common antihistamine uh, adverse reaction comparative but when you classify them and try to understand compare between generation 1 and generation 2 you will notice that generation 1 are highly lipid soluble hence their effects on cns and periphery is very high because they have solubility of the blood brain barrier sedative nature is very high in generation 1 generation 1 shows you anticholinergic properties but generation 1 results in sleepiness okay so generation 2 when i say what are the advantages of generation 2 antihistamine over generation 1 in a nutshell they are larger molecules less lipid soluble less sedative less anticholinergic properties less antiadrenergic properties long action good duration less sedative properties and the side effects like dry mouth and urinary retention are also less example cetirizine and fexofenadine desloratadine loratadine and all those drugs are there so in a, a while i we can also uh, talk about some uh, uses of antihistamine and antihistamine is more popularly used or allergic rhinitis any type of itching any type of allergy any type of uh, uh, you can uh, talk about motion sickness uh, even parkinsonisms even anti emetic antihistamines are good drug of choice they are also drug of choice for anaphylaxis if 
adrenaline doesn't work out or a second or third line of drug after adrenaline and steroids is also antihistamines just chlorpheniramine avil can be also given then you have got uh, eicosanoids eicosanoids can be classified into prostanoids and leukotrienes and lipoxanoids maybe you have heard of uh, eicosanoid being a broad term in prostanoids you have got prostaglandins you have got prostacyclins and you have got thrombaxanes and then leukotrienes you have got lt a4 b4 c4 d4 d4 now these prostaglandins have therapeutically used because they prevent conception then use of labor at term termination of pregnancy prevention or elevation of gastric ulcers controls inflammation because it prevents gastric ulcer relief of asthma and congestions and a potentially promoting substance so prostaglandins are good because they prevent ulcers and all they are bad sometimes because they induce labor but they are also used to induce labor when labor has to be used at term so prostaglandin analogs you have got prostaglandin e1 analog which is a very very common called as misoprostol drug which can be given intravaginal oral you have got gemiprostol also you have got prostaglandin i2 which is epoprostanol you have got prostaglandin f2 you have got prostaglandin e2 so you have got all these drugs and they are all basically used for gynec procedures and basically for for the uh, promotion of labor and all but prostaglandins are also one of the important biological component which is actually used for also prevention of your gastric ulcer because it forms a lot of dilatation and uh, uh, lining of the gastric epithelium so this is all very important autocoids uh, this was a very brief discussion on autocoids on histamine and prostaglandins and generation 1 and generation 2 and thank you